When you go shopping at RV dealerships, salesmen will often try to show you the more expensive RVs, saying that they are better quality. But are they? I'm an RV technician, and I went undercover at RV dealerships, so I could look at these RVs and tell you which ones are quality and which ones are hype. In today's video, I'm going to be comparing two pretty large travel trailers, a 2024 Brinkley Model Z Air 285 and a Jayco Eagle 294 CKBS. The interesting thing is that the Jayco Eagle is actually five feet longer than the Brinkley, but the Brinkley is like $30,000 more expensive. In this video, we're going to answer the question, is the Brinkley worth that extra $30,000 for a smaller floor plan? And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to talk about the four things you need to do to be sure that you get a quality RV. So the first category we're going to look at is the water heaters. Now, both of these RVs have a tankless Furion brand water heater. Older tankless Furion water heaters had a sensor problem that if rain water was blown into the exhaust tube, it would fill up and disable a sensor so the water heater would quit working. Supposedly, the newer generation Furion tankless water heaters have solved this problem. So these I give 10 out of 10 points. Keep in mind, if you're wanting to boondock in these travel trailers, a tankless water heater is not the best choice because you cannot conserve water. The next category we're going to look at is the roofs on these RVs, and both of these have a comparable quality membrane type roof, which I would give 10 out of 10 points. Keep in mind, with all membrane type roofs, if they're not glued down correctly at the factory, wind coming over the top of the RV can make bubbles grow and completely rip the roof off. I have a free checklist called my Don't Buy a Lemon Guide that covers this and other types types of defects that you should be watching for. One thing I want to note that Brinkley did really well on their roof is the quantity of lap sealant they put around all of the fixtures. The trailers I've seen that have had imperfections in the caulking that resulted in leaks was where they put the caulking on too thin and it tore as they were going down the road. So this nice thick layer of caulking is going to last longer before it cracks. The next category we're going to talk about on these RVs is the refrigerators. Both of these RVs have a pretty compact comparable 12 volt refrigerator. The Brinkley has a Furion brand, which I've also seen with the Gerard name brand on it. And the Jayco Eagle has a GE 12 volt refrigerator that also is labeled Everchill or Canon or all kinds of different names they slap on the same refrigerator because GE does not make this refrigerator. I am not really a fan of 12 volt refrigerators, in particular these, because I've seen a lot of issues with the computer boards going bad on them. And some models of these refrigerators you can't even get replacement parts for. If it's outside of warranty, you're paying for a new refrigerator, which is super frustrating. I give 6 out of 10 points for both of these refrigerators. The next category in my grading scale is the air conditioners. Jayco Eagle has a standard Coleman air conditioner. I've had to replace a lot of these because they lost their refrigerant. The Brinkley has a Furion Chill Cube air conditioner. The Chill Cube actually has some additional features that make it really desirable. First off, it's 18,000 BTU rating rather than maximum of 15,000 BTUs from Coleman. BTUs is British thermal units. It's just a measurement of how much heat it can move from the inside of your RV to the outside. These air conditioners can not only move heat faster, so they will cool the RV more effectively, but also the Chill Cube has a different type of compressor on the inside. It's variable speed. It uses way less electricity, up to 40% less energy usage. The other big benefit is essentially it has a soft start built in. So if you're running your RV on a generator and the AC cranks up, it doesn't create a huge surge of power draw. I definitely give the Furion Chill Cube a 10 out of 10. Next, let's look at the cabinet quality on these two RVs. And interestingly, despite the huge price increase on the Brinkley, the quality of the cabinet frames and doors appears to be the same. The doors are made out of a solid wood material and the cabinet face frames are made out of lumber core with a vinyl wrap on it. Unfortunately, very few RV manufacturers use solid wood face frames on their cabinets. The consequence is that if water gets on these face frames and around the edge of the vinyl wrap, it can cause it to swell and burst the vinyl wrap. Brinkley is doing something interesting on their drawer boxes, a dovetail joint on the front of the box to prevent the box from coming apart if the drawer is slammed. 
because of the material choices in their cabinets, I give both the Brinkley and the Jayco 8 out of 10 points. Next, let's talk about the countertop quality in these two RVs. Brinkley chose to use solid surface countertops. In the Jayco Eagle, I see thermofoil countertops. If you accidentally set a hot pan on the thermofoil, it will burn it or melt completely through it. One of my viewers said they set a can of carpet cleaner on the countertop and the chemicals ran down and melted a hole through the countertop. Thermofoil, if very well cared for, can last you a long time, but it is not in any way comparable to solid surfaces in terms of its objective quality and durability. Here's another concern on the Jayco in particular. At the edge of the sink, there's a gap in the caulking where water is going to get in there and get behind the thermofoil wrap and start to swell up the MDF that's going to ruin the countertops if they don't fix this factory defect. I give the countertops in the Jayco Eagle 2 out of 10 points, but Brinkley gets 10 out of 10 points. Folks, if you want to know how to tell the difference between thermofoil and solid surface counters, or how to tell the quality of an RV in general, you should check out my RV shopping course. If you get my shopping course, then you also get access to the app which you see me using today to grade these RVs and a database of over 500 RVs, grades that I have put in and other undercover shoppers. The cool thing about the RV database is that you can actually just sort by letter grade and quickly see what gets an A, B, or C grade. Let's take a look at the choice of slide out components on these two RVs. Both the Brinkley and the Jayco Eagle utilize what I consider to be the most reliable slide out mechanism which is the through frame electric slide out. But the Jayco Eagle has an additional slide out with a different type of mechanism. This one is cable driven. Now there's been some confusion with some of my viewers. I give any RV that has the BAL AccuSlide cable system an automatic F because it is a terrible system that can break the wall of your RV. This one also from BAL, their exact slides cable system is actually different in how it's constructed. It actually solves all of my complaints against the BAL AccuSlide system. It doesn't have the ability to rip cables brackets off the wall the way the AccuSlide does or drip oil on the roof. Because of that, the BAL exact slide on this, I still give a 10 out of 10 points. Keep in mind with the exact slide that cables will still get loose over time and they will need to be retensioned. It requires more maintenance than the slides on the Brinkley. Next, let's talk about the frame and suspension on these RVs. One thing I found very interesting to note is that Brinkley chose to add shock absorbers to their suspension. This is not a common RV feature. When you hit a bump in the road, if you don't have shock absorbers, and people with really old cars and blown out shock absorbers might have experienced this, the car will bounce up and down and up and down and up and down. The purpose of shock absorbers is to stop that movement so that you have steering and braking on your wheels and they're not bouncing and skidding. It also makes the ride more comfortable and smooth. So for both keeping your stuff in place and safety reasons, I think shock absorbers are a really, really great feature to have. Next, let's talk about the plumbing on these two RVs. Many RV manufacturers are putting plumbing together in a way that causes leaks. Brinkley, when they first started making RVs, was putting improper plumbing into their RVs. One thing I'm really happy to say is that Brinkley has listened to people asking for better plumbing, and they've actually made changes. They have quit putting in improper plumbing connections and now use pre-made flex hose assemblies at their water pump. I am very happy to give their plumbing a 10 out of 10 and say this is quality. The Jayco, on the other hand, when I looked at the plumbing, everything looked good under the sinks, behind the toilet, blah, 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 blah. But hidden behind an access panel at the back of the water heater, not only did they use the improper flex tube pinch clamped onto a PEX fitting thing that causes leaks, this is like the most likely scenario to create water leaks in an RV where you're not going to see it until it's done a lot of damage. I have to give the plumbing on this Jayco a 0 out of 10. The only saving grace in all of this is that it's like this much bad plumbing. I have a suggestion for you if you're seriously looking to buy this RV. Call Jayco and ask if you can special order one with good plumbing. They'll tell you no. I've had other people do it. But the reason I say that is they're not going to change this unless you ask for something to be different. That's why Brinkley changed their plumbing. I think if enough people ask Jayco for better plumbing, they'll change these two tubes to something correct. The last category is fit and finish. On the Jayco Eagle, I found a whole piece of trim missing off of the door to the bathroom, found some other small trims that were out of place, and then like I mentioned before, the caulking around the sink that's going to leak and damage the countertops. I give the Jayco fit and finish 7 out of 10 points. Brinkley, on the other hand, I'm happy to say, had really excellent 
excellent fit and finish. I give the Brinkley fit and finish 10 out of 10 points. The total aggregate score for the Jayco Eagle was 70 points, which would have been a C minus trailer. Unfortunately, because of the plumbing issue, I give this an automatic F grade. Why would I give this an F grade for a couple of bad plumbing fittings that are easy to fix? Look folks, if these start dripping slowly and you don't notice it because it's not gushing everywhere, it's buried under an access panel where you're not gonna see it leaking until it's caused a lot of water damage. Even just a couple of bad plumbing connections are a very serious issue. You should not have to replumb a new RV. Brinkley, on the other hand, scored 94 points, solid A-grade trailer. So is the Brinkley worth the extra $30,000 for a smaller floor plan? Is it really that much better quality? The thing you gotta understand about RV shopping is there's really four different things you need to do in order to get a quality RV. The first thing you have to do is make sure that the RV fits your desired camping lifestyle. For example, I wouldn't recommend either of these RVs if you're wanting to seriously boondock. This is why I've started offering consulting for people shopping for RVs, is there's a lot of things to consider about your desired usage relative to the RV. The second thing is you need to take into account the quality of components. And in this case, yes, the Brinkley is a more quality built RV. That's what my shopping course and grading app are really designed to dive into, is all of those various components. The third big thing you have to pay attention to, though, is manufacturing defects. Even something like a Brinkley that has selected quality components can have manufacturing defects. These defects can ruin your camping experience if you don't catch them during the shopping process. The fourth and final thing you have to pay attention to if you're buying a new RV is the reputation of the companies. How they handle warranty claims is like a big difference in customer satisfaction. So after watching this video, leave a comment below and tell me what you think. Do you think the Brinkley is worth the extra money? As far as my own answer to this question, I'll just leave my letter grade stand where it is. One gets an F and one is an A grade trailer. If you're shopping RVs, I've got a whole playlist of undercover RV reviews. You can click here to see. If you're interested in full timing, you can click here for my video about which RV is best for full timing. If you want to understand the plumbing problem that's plaguing the RV industry better, click here for a playlist of videos.